site and see the, the progress that's being made, or are we taking their word for it? No, no, I mean, uh, they, they, they started over on, uh, <coughs> on Shenmar Way and uh, New Hamilton. I have been on site there. They've completed that. It was there this morning. And I've been on site at McIntyre Crossing also. And they've started some work at McIntyre Crossing. And McIntyre Wood Shop Father has is, is got minimal things to do. And I think they're tying them all together. They were getting the, uh, the equipment and schedule to come in. Uh, so we're at uh, McIntyre Woods is the Jacob Rayner Lane and Samuel Phelps Way, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm looking at the punch list that uh, Mr. Gene Grandi provided. I don't see anything for uh, Samuel Phelps though. What is that one? Hold on. Nope, nothing on the list. There. It's no. What's on the list is uh, oh, here we go. slash. Jacob oh, I'm Rain sorry, you're right. Lane. Okay, yeah. Vertical location of water main, yep. no grades. Location of gas main. So it's all drafting. This is all uh, so, so engineering it's, stuff. So it's just engineering stuff. It isn't a lot of physical work. It's just to make sure the plans are accurate. Yeah, there would also be some, um, some crack sealing and a few other minor repairs. We're going to do that um, comprehensively between the two subdivisions, and that work is scheduled. I don't have any other questions on this one. Then. Yeah, that'll be complete this week here. <coughs> so we wait on this until next Monday, too. Tell us it's going to be done this week. Come back next week and tell us show's done. Uh, accepted. Give us at 610. <laughs> Who's making the motion? I move to continue the public hearing on McIntyre Woods subdivision until 610 p.m. on October the 4th. Second. <coughs> Motion by Mr. Delaney, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Further discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous? <coughs> we appreciate it if uh, you can be there pretty much on time because we only have about 45 minutes. I'll be there. Yeah. We'll let you, we don't know the room yet, but we'll let them know. B, B109? B109. Yeah. Where we usually meet. Right? Yep, just up the stairs from the cafeteria. Is that, being, is, that, is that the right number? Could be B108. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was in 109 last Joe, time. what's the number? You go through this all the time. Number one is on the paper, go to the other one. <laughs> 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 it's on the and that's the cross the that's room. The teachers. They both are. <laughs> yeah, but one's you know, the light side. <laughs> Second door on the right. Go up the stairs. Take a right at the first corridor. It's the second door on the right. <laughs> the one's open. I was just there last week. <laughs> Actually, in that very room. Okay. Uh, McIntyre Crossing Subdivision. <coughs> All right. So, shall we do what we we got? We got. Got that, and then some, tonight we're handed another packet. It's the same stuff. It's, it's the, the same, same information. Same stuff. Same stuff. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, she consolidated it. Uh, Bob, do we yeah. have a, a time problem here as far as the agenda? 7.45? Oh. Just curious. You are Sorry. right. I think it would be. I guess we're a little early. <laughs> so we're going to have to hold until 7.45 in case there's another. Well, let's see, uh, where can we go from here? Just to <coughs> current administrator's report, is there anything, Greg? Uh, sure. Uh, you can have Sure, there's always, there's always some good stuff. Well, no, I mean, <coughs> it won't uh, get us to uh, 745. Sure. Um, the board had asked uh, council to look into the status of some surplus property up at 7 Rust Lane. You recall that was one of the parcels that the board had notified the public notice of intent in terms of offering it for sale. And one of the questions that came up in that discussion was the status of the restrictive covenant involving dedicating the land for open space and recreation purposes. Um, the land was taken for tax title, and there was a question in terms of whether that tax title taking extinguished the covenants. And um, I've since heard from council, and council informs me that 
no, that covenant is still in place. So if the land were to be sold, it needs to be sold with those restrictions in place, and that certainly would restrict any development opportunities that anyone may have for the parcel, and obviously would potentially affects the value of the land in terms of what the board might want to establish. So that was really one of the questions that we had that was remaining. And you'll recall that uh, the, the residents in the neighborhood indicated that they would go out and they would solicit interest amongst their neighbors, and uh, we did receive a response. There was not a, a tremendous amount of interest, so what I would suggest is um, upon conclusion of town meeting that the board at its next available session would put this on the agenda and discuss the disposal of the parcels that uh, originally before you, uh, I think it was about six weeks ago. So the neighbors weren't able to pull it together? They were not able to pull it together. They had a lot more information for us, but they weren't able to pull it together. We were not able to pull it together. Interesting. Yep. Okay. But then, and, I, and I guess in a way it probably did need to pull it together now with the fact that that covenant is still in place. Yeah, but we appreciate all their efforts yep. getting us that information. That was helpful. Yeah. Did you yes. guys have that one abutter of the um, right. park street, street that was interested in? Yeah. And that's what he was going to keep it <coughs> as I was concerned because mm -hmm. we've got 50 foot of access to park street. Yep. That's a little bit. Yep. That's the F 52, so we've got to get a few extra feet. <laughs> Highland that he had, and there was a little extra in there that might have been a development option to him. So that appears not to be the case. Well, not using that property now. Right. Not using that property. Well, he still might be interested in it then, because what he was proposing was open space. Right. So we'll schedule it on the agenda for an upcoming meeting. Okay. Um, the second item on my report is uh, resignation from the elected member <coughs> to the Northeast Regional Vocational School Committee. Mr. Paul Sweeney has indicated that he'll be resigning his position effective October 6th. And the town clerk informs that the filling of that vacancy till November of 2012 requires a vote of the Board of Selectmen, joint vote of the Board of Selectmen and the school committee. I spoke with the superintendent of schools, realizing that we would want to go ahead and, and post the position in accordance with the board's, the board's protocol. And she indicated to me that the school committee would be available on either October 12th or the 25th if you wish to proceed with the appointment um, within the next 30 days. But uh, it is kind of interesting that the uh, vacancy would be until November of 2012. So you would be appointed until that date. And uh, Mr. Sweeney's resignation was received by the town clerk and has been documented. So you don't appoint until the next election. Right, this particular position has to run district-wide. I believe there's 13 communities uh, represented on the Northeast Regional Vocational Technical High School Board. So whoever seeks, or oh, the appointment is by us here in Northrhetic, right. yeah. but when the term is expired, they have to run in 13 communities. Just from North, North Reading representative has to run in 13 oh, communities. Right, yeah. so, okay, if, so, so if the three people running from North Reading, it has to yeah. be a North Reading representative, yeah. they're running in 13 communities. We're going to have a representative from North Reading, but they have to run in 13 communities. And so when's that election? What's it tied into? Statewide election? State, state election. State, state election. 2012. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm going to for something else, but that's good to know. Okay. Uh, I guess my question is, uh, will we be advertising this? Yes. And <coughs> given the fact that we're going to advertise it uh, October 12th, is that too Doesn't soon? appear too possible soon? given the late date that we're at In fact, right the now. 25th doesn't either, no. does it? Well, well if, we, if we allow two weeks from the date that it's been submitted to the paper, we potentially could get it in this Thursday, so two weeks they're out, should, should be okay. Is there a screening committee or is it just a full... <clears throat> it's one of the items that uh, the board might want to look at is appointing a, a screening committee together with the school committee to interview and meet with the candidates. It might be a more efficient means than bringing a host of candidates before the board. I don't know how much. I don't know how much interest this is going to generate anyway, but it's. Uh, I, I think, again, I don't think we have going to have half a dozen candidates to look at. You'd be lucky if you have one or two. Um, or if we get none. You might get surprised. Get no, I, I think you're going to get one. I know you're going to get one, and you're going to get one that's uh, very capable and uh, interested and, and knows the system and knows it well. Uh, but 
I don't know what the interest is, is going to be beyond that. Uh, I don't think we have to go through this whole screening committee process and, and drag it out. I, I think. Uh, what do you mean? Who's, if you get 6, do you bring all 6 before the joint committee and interview them that way? Or, or no, or just what, as we, what's the process? Just as we did with the uh, planning commission vacancy, I suppose. You can call. Yeah, that went pretty quickly and pretty well. And then, well, uh, I guess what would be <coughs> helpful, and if, if we're going to just go forward and we're assuming there's only going to be a one, two, three, or four, right. not more than six uh, candidates, well, uh, there's as those over, uh, over the years, applications come in, then we should forward it to all the board members, including the school committee, mm -hmm. and yeah. leave it up to the individuals to do one-on-ones like we would for a normal committee. Yeah. I think that's wise. And then, again, just fill the vacancy as soon as we can so that we're represented down there. And we're not without representation for a very long period mm -hmm. of time. Uh, with a lot of issues going on down at the, the vocational school, and uh, I certainly I'd would like, like to, to have some. Uh, let me talk to the chair of the school committee and s see what they think about the process. We can make a decision. Let's post the uh, advertisement for it. Yeah. And... Uh, either on Monday night at our, our next meeting, I'll have spoken to the chair and see if there's any issues with just mm -hmm. doing this or whether they feel strongly about uh, having a formal interview, a uh, group interview. Yeah. yeah, and target the 25th, if that's it. And we'll target the 25th sure. and sure. yeah. <coughs> I assume the 16th or the 20th is... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. The 25th. 25th, yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got a few minutes. <laughs> How much time do we have? A couple minutes. Let me skip to number five. Um, number five, the board had asked me to uh, look into retaining the services of a consultant to look at our health insurance plan, evaluate it, come back to us with some options. I did a solicitation for proposals. <coughs> a total of four firms responded. I had an opportunity to interview those four firms. I uh, met with them in my office. Uh, two of them stood out as being um, dedicated to municipal clients in Massachusetts. I think it was important to, to bring in someone that has an understanding of the municipal marketplace and understands the unique situation that cities and towns are in with regard to health insurance. And so I uh, uh, looked at those two firms, and as a result of uh, my evaluation, I'm, I'm confident that uh, there is a firm that will uh, meet our needs uh, going forward. The uh, scope of services that was put together said that they would first analyze our program and come back with some recommendations um, in terms of potential changes that we could make, but also look at our financing structure and our administrative capabilities, as you know, we have a part-time human resources person who probably spends 75% of her time on health insurance issues. So they're going to look at that. Um, they will also come back with some strategies in terms of long-range cost savings. But the most important thing is the ongoing consulting services, consulting services to the board. Um, also, uh, willingness to meet with our unions and with our employees to educate them to the process. And I think it's vital that we have someone with experience that can really work that process because I think it's really critical in terms of communicating any potential changes. So um, that would also involve working with the Insurance Advisory Committee, which is a group, as you know, which is set up under state law to recommend changes in health insurance plans. The um, anticipated uh, cost is about $14,000 a year. So it's not a expensive proposition. I think it's money that would be well spent. Um, I'm ready to proceed in terms of moving, moving forward with a, uh, with a uh, bid award, but before I did so, I did want to touch base with the board and let you know that I'm at that point right now. <coughs> Just as a, a comment, uh, I've been working with Greg on this issue. In strong support for bringing in some technical support. As you, you're well aware, uh, Human Resource, originally when it was set up, was supposed to be a full-time position. It's, it's not and we're lacking real expertise in that area. And as you're well aware, health insurance is one of our big issues uh, that uh, constantly uh, eats away at our availability.